Hey, third grade mathematicians, this is Miss Foster missing you so much, but I've got an interesting problem for you to consider this week. It might seem easy on the surface, but it's hard when you really try to show your understanding. So our problem for this week is creating visual proofs for money and decimals. We have a unit on money coming up, and I promise that learning about decimals will be super handy in fourth grade and beyond. And if we were all in the room together, I would ask you, hey, where have you seen prices like this $1.50 before? Of course, you're not here, but I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about it. Just like in class, this means I've got one idea, this means I've got two. See how many you can get. Got something? I see them at the grocery store a lot. Or gas stations. And then the, comes the hard part of this problem. What pictures could we draw or what objects could we use to show what $1.50 means? Now that's creating a visual proof, something everybody can see. And that can be tricky, especially when we're not at school. Of course, if we were at school, then I would grab out my base 10 blocks. Here they are. And I would probably use my single thousand, which we have a couple plastic ones, but most of mine are made out of unit origami. So let's pretend that that is going to stand in for our $1. If that's $1, then these hundred flats would become tenths because it takes 10 of them to equal one of these. If this is our single dollar or our single one, then our regular 10 rods would become hundreds because it takes 100 of these to make one of those. And finally, because I have lots of them, I would get out my little centimeter cubes. If this is a single one, there are 1,000 of them in there. And so these little guys would become thousands. Now, as you can see, I wrote our tenths hundredths, and thousandths as fractions. I also wrote them as decimals. This is one-tenth, this down here is one-hundredth, and this is one-thousandth. And so as you move over to the right, we're just using place value to show bits and pieces of things. And so the place just to the right of the decimal is the tenths place. Two places to the right of the decimal is the hundredths place. Oh my goodness, that's hard to say. And three places to the right of the decimal would be the thousandths place. But you probably don't have these at home. I don't even have that many at home. So then I thought, well, we could get actual money. And you use this all the time. Or maybe you've seen it. See if your adults can help you. If this is my whole single dollar, then dimes become our tenths. I just noticed I forgot the fraction bar. So I took a moment and came back to this recording. You might see how it changes down here. So a dime is one tenth, or we could write it as zero dollars, one dime, no pennies. That's how we write tenth, a, a dime using dollar money and decimals. And then, of course, pennies, there are 100 pennies or 100 cents in a dollar. And so they are our hundredths. Here you see the fraction for 100 and how I would write it in a money signature using decimals. Now, we don't have coins for thousandths, but definitely talk about this with your adults because some people sneak around and try to use them. Ah! <sighs> Now, there are many, many creative ways to do this, and I believe that math can be creative. So then I just thought about my house, and maybe you are seeing something on the screen that also exists in your house, perhaps in your playroom, or your brother's playroom, or your mom's knitting kit, or is that just me? Maybe it's in your Pokemon card collection. Oh, do any of you have some of these at home? Maybe you do. We can try to be creative in visually showing decimals. 
We just have to figure out what's going to be the single one, what's going to be the tenths, and what's going to be the hundredths. Now, I have examples of two visual proofs here for a dollar fifty cents. Here I used my coins and bills, and this is one whole dollar, and here's one tenth, one tenth, one tenth, one tenth, one tenth. If I add them all together, I'll get five tenths, which in this case is also written as fifty cents. They're equal. And if I put all that together, I get one dollar and fifty cents. But Miss Foster, you told us not to use and when we say numbers. That's right. I did tell you that because this is where we use it. The and is for the decimal place. It shows us the difference between whole numbers and pieces and parts of numbers. In this case, using our place value system. Now, I would, of course, get out my base 10 blocks if I were in the classroom. So if the single thousand cube stands for a dollar, and each hundred flat is one tenth, then one plus five tenths equals one and five tenths. This is equal to this. Just think about that for a while. Now I am linking this to your teacher's Veracross homepage, but I have made a special page with all of this on there for you. You can find this video and you can also read through the problem. So it has Miss Johnson and Miss Foster over here. Don't let that bother you. That this is still your video for you. Promise. We just have a slight technical glitch that we're still working on, and it may stay this way for the rest of the school year. Your essential question is. How can we visually model money and decimals? And this is your problem. You want to buy 20 friendship based bracelets for your friends. Which store below offers the better deal? These are friendship bracelets and they're super fun. Now one store is selling them with a sign that says four friendship bracelets for $5. Not if you've seen signs like this before. The store next door has a sign above their friendship bracelets that says 10 friendship bracelets for $13. So which has a better price? That's what you have to figure out. And once you do, and this might be the hardest part, you need to create a visual proof to show why one store has a better price than the other. Just like with mine, a visual proof includes pictures or objects, and it will include number sentences like I did here, or maybe even written sentences like I did that there. So we'll need that to be a part of it as well. You also need to really state your reasons for justifying your choice. Remember, sharing your reasoning and talking about math is a habit of the highest achieving math learners, so I know you will want to be doing that. When you are done, send me a digital photo at my school address, foster at wellington.org. We'll get together next week to discuss what you found and see if we can do even more. I miss you so much, but happy math, and thanks for playing math with me. Bye-bye.